Hey guys, welcome to another video on my channel. This is a review of the Logitech G815 and the G915 keyboards. First up, I want to go over the common specs between these two keyboards. They're virtually the same exact keyboard except that one is a wireless version and one is a wired. So right off the bat, the G815 retails for $199 and the G915 retails for $249. These two keyboards come in three different switch types. All three are mechanical, so these are mechanical keyboards. One is called the GL Clicky. One is the GL Tactile, and one is the GL Linear. Now the version that I have of each one is the Linear. For me personally, I don't like the very loud mechanical keyboard sound, but if that is your preference, then you're gonna wanna look at one of the other two, because this is the quietest of the three. The thing I personally like about Linear keyboards is you still get the speed and accuracy of the mechanical keyboard, but it's a little bit closer to the feeling of kind of like the old school membrane keyboards in my opinion. And for me, I prefer to have that closer to like a softer touch and feel to my keystrokes compared to a very tactile feedback style mechanical keyboard. But that's completely based on preference. With this specific model, the 815 and the 915, both of them I found to be just perfect for responsiveness and ability to type with minimal errors, that type of thing. Now the actuation distance on both of these is identical at 1.5 millimeters. Oddly enough, the full travel distance is slightly different. On the G815, it's a full three millimeters, but on the G915, it's 2.77 millimeters. Honestly, I do not feel any difference whatsoever. I've been using the G815 for almost a year and the G915 now for about two weeks and I don't notice any difference. They feel the same. It wasn't like I had to get used to one over the other. They're very comfortable to type with and very responsive, very fast, very accurate. These keyboards are slightly different in weight. The G815 is a little bit heavier at 1145 grams versus 1025 grams on the G915. Both keyboards do come in the same black brushed metal. It's a very sleek and modern look, especially for a gaming setup, in my opinion. This seems to be kind of the modern trend. Both keyboards have three memory profiles that let you store two lighting configurations and three different macro configurations. Both keyboards have five dedicated G keys, fully programmable, and the software is very intuitive, I find, to set up your macros and program them exactly how you want. And then there's three macro modes, so you actually get 15 different G keys depending on how you want to do it. And both keyboards have a macro record button, so you can record a macro just by hitting the record button and then typing your keystrokes and have it record what you're doing. Both of these keyboards are full RGB, meaning you can customize virtually every single key individually on these keyboards to do just about anything you want. Both keyboards have dedicated media control keys and a very large volume wheel these things work flawlessly. I mean, I use them constantly just to control my iTunes music or my Windows volume, and they, there's no lag. They work very, very well. They're instant response to start and stop music, and I find them to be in a good, nice position, easy to get to, easy to use. And lastly, both of these keyboards come with a two-year warranty direct through Logitech. So the next thing we're gonna go over are the uncommon specs. So what do each of these keyboards have that the other does not? So a very obvious one right off the bat, the G815 has a permanently attached USB cable, whereas the G915 does not, although you can plug in a USB cable and use it wired. But on the G815, the cable itself is very rugged and durable. Even though it doesn't disconnect from the keyboard itself, it doesn't feel like it's going to come loose, like it, it is a very rugged piece. Now keep in mind that it has two USB ports that you plug into the computer. One of them is for the keyboard itself, and the other is for a USB port which is built into the back of the keyboard only on the G815 model. 
That USB port is very handy because it gives you a quick access spot to plug in a memory stick, a wireless mouse, or any other USB devices. And of course, on the G915, you do have a USB port, it's micro USB, that allows you to attach the included cable for charging purposes. But if you plug it into your computer, it'll not only charge it, but it will work as a keyboard, a wired keyboard at that point. One thing I did notice, the G915 has an on-off switch. If you turn it off, the keyboard will not work whether wired or wireless. It just turns the whole keyboard off. Now there's a couple of buttons at the top of these keyboards. On the G815, it only has a brightness toggle and a gaming mode. And on the G915, they've actually added two additional buttons to this area. One is the wireless button and another is the Bluetooth button, which we'll cover shortly. This is a slight pet peeve of mine. The G815 has a light indicating caps lock or num lock, whichever is on. On the G915, they've used those same two lights. One of them shows the caps lock, but the other one is the battery indicator. So you actually don't have a number lock light on the G915. Now I've gotten used to it for the most part, but I do kind of miss it sometimes because I can't always tell and I'll try to start keying in some numbers without realizing that the number lock is not on. So now we're gonna cover a feature that's only available on the G915, which is the wireless feature. Now in this section, I'm also gonna talk about the Bluetooth, which is another form of wireless technology, but Bluetooth and the wireless that comes with this keyboard are two distinctly different technologies that are used to connect this keyboard to your computer. In order to use the wireless, you have to use the included USB dongle that comes with the keyboard. It's proprietary. If you're using Bluetooth, then you can use any Bluetooth receiver to talk to the keyboard. Now, admittedly, I didn't do a whole lot of extensive testing with Bluetooth, but I can tell you that a cool feature or benefit of having this Bluetooth is that you can basically pair this keyboard with two different computers. So let's say that you've got an, a MacBook or a laptop of some sort, and you've got your regular computer. As long as your laptop has Bluetooth or you add a Bluetooth dongle to it, you can, with a quick flip or hit of a button, switch between your main computer or your laptop for typing purposes. Now, regarding the Lightspeed Wireless Mode, which is the default Logitech mode that talks to the dongle that comes with the keyboard, I have noticed zero lag with this thing. I mean, compared to the G815, I have honestly not noticed a single drop of a key, a lag in a key, everything seems just as responsive as I've always been used to and familiar with from a wired keyboard. But from the viewpoint of using this as a gaming keyboard, but also an all around just a workhorse, I say in every way this keyboard shines. The G915, the wireless feature is brilliant and I notice no perceivable lag whatsoever. So next I'm gonna talk about the user experience. As a user, these are extremely comfortable keyboards. I love them. I think that they are hands down my favorite keyboards that I've ever used. Now the G keys, I've always been a fan of the G keys on Logitech keyboards. Personally, I find the Logitech software to be very intuitive. It does every possible thing that I, I personally would need it to. Next, the lighting controls. I love the software that lets you change the color configuration and I find that I can do anything in it that I can dream up, anything I would want. So I've been very happy with the color programmability of the Logitech keyboard. I also mentioned earlier about the media control keys. Again, I just want to reiterate that these keys work really well. They're very big, easy to find. The volume knob is huge. It's, it's very long and you just kind of roll it with your finger and I find that it's extremely responsive. It just works flawlessly for me. And lastly, on the user experience, my experience with the macro functionality has been phenomenal. I, I haven't found a macro that I wanted to do that I wasn't able to program on the Logitech keyboard. So all in all, the G keys, the macros, the lighting, the overall use of these keyboards is very, very top rate and enjoyable. Okay, so now we're gonna cover another feature that's only available on the G915. Now I'm talking about battery life. Now at a full charge, 
with the default settings for the lighting, you get 34 hours of battery life approximately. Now keep in mind that is at the brightest settings. So they're guesstimating 34 hours. If you just dim it by one, so you're now at brightness level three, you jump almost double to 60 hours. Then at brightness level two, it jumps to 95 hours. At brightness one, it's 137 hours. Now keep in mind that is continuous use because when the keyboard goes to sleep, it, I don't notice any difference in the battery level like overnight, for example. It may drop a little bit and it may drop over time if you're not using it every day, but in general, the main dropping of those hours is from use. And lastly, if you decide to turn the lights off completely, you get over 1100 hours from this keyboard. I mean, that's gonna last for potentially weeks and weeks and weeks. So very nice, I would say, on the battery life. Now, another cool feature about the battery, which I really like, is a low battery indicator. You have a couple settings you can choose, but the default and the one that I like is the entire keyboard will suddenly start glowing or breathing red when it gets below 15%. Now below 15% means you still have quite a few hours to go. So if you're in the middle of something important, don't worry about it. It's not like, oh my gosh, I'm about to run out of juice. No, you've got hours left. Now, speaking of charging this thing, I just have a big battery bank that I use to recharge most of my devices, honestly. That way you've only got really one device that you're taking somewhere else to plug it in and charge it, which is my battery bank. The nice thing with the Logitech keyboard, the G915, and also the Logitech Pro Gaming wireless mouse, which is the mouse that I use along with it, they both are instant wake. So if you don't have them turned off, but just let them go to sleep, they're using very minimal power. They're hardly draining the battery at all. But when you are ready to use them again, the mouse, you just start moving it and it's already moving on the screen. The keyboard, you can literally just start typing and it's already typing on the screen. And it doesn't drop any keys whatsoever. Both of these devices are instant response. You start typing, the letters are on the screen. You start moving the mouse, the cursor is moving on the screen. So the next things that I wanna cover are what I call the cons of this particular device or these two particular keyboards. The first one that I'll point out, this is specific to the G915 only. The G815 does not suffer from this particular problem. When the G915 is asleep, when you first wake it up, it will take about one to two seconds. It does a quick little reboot. And depending on which macro mode you're in, M1, M2, or M3, it always resets it back to M1. You should be aware of this because it is kind of a quirky thing, potentially something that Logitech could fix with a software fix. Now on that same note, that little reset causes one other goofy thing that I've noticed. Let's say that you have a document open on your screen and your keyboard is completely asleep. And you come up and you press the shift key and you start typing. When it does its little reset after one or two seconds, it no longer registers that you have the shift key held. So you can still be holding it, but now it's typing lowercase letters. You have to let go of the shift key and press it again and then it goes back to registering that the shift key is pressed. If you wake the keyboard, and within two seconds, then you press the shift key, no problem. There is literally no issue. Then the keyboard goes on working perfectly. Just as kind of a, a side test that I did, if you wake it by pressing the caps lock key and turn on the caps lock, when it does the reset, it does not turn off the caps lock. So you even have a workaround for this potentially. They're just little nuances that as long as you know them about the keyboard, they're not gonna be a problem. And the other con that I have on this keyboard, every key on the keyboard is programmable as far as the RGB, except that top row of special buttons, none of them have color customization except the brightness button. All the other ones have a set color and you also can't turn them off. And that's pretty much it for cons for this review. So in this section, I'm gonna go over my final thoughts on these two keyboards and give you my conclusion and my recommendation on these. These two keyboards are without a doubt 
the best keyboards that I have ever used. They're very responsive, they're quick, they're comfortable, I don't make mistakes with them, the G keys are great, the color effects are great, battery life is great, wireless is great, the wired version is phenomenal, even the USB port on the back of it works flawlessly. All around, these are exceptional keyboards. Now, if you came here specifically looking for advice as to which of these two models to pick, maybe you were already decided on one of them, but you didn't know which of the two, I'm gonna just quickly list out what I feel are the benefits to each of these two models. So I will start with the G915. So right off the bat, number one benefit in my book is no wires. I love having no wires. If you're interested in shaving down on the number of wires that you have on your desk, go for it. Next, you've got the ability to connect to more than one device. You can connect to a second computer. This Bluetooth on this particular keyboard even supports Android and iOS devices, so you can potentially use it to control like an iPad Pro or a MacBook. So you've got a lot of versatility with that Bluetooth option as a quick way to connect a keyboard to another device. Because it's wireless and the keyboard is so thin, it's easy to store the thing away. Maybe you've got a, a cabinet or a drawer somewhere and you just tuck it away at night. That keeps it from getting dusty and it keeps your desk clean. And lastly, it has the ability to turn the keyboard off. Whether or not that's a feature you need, it is on the G915. So I use it sometimes when I'm cleaning the thing I don't have to turn my computer off in order to clean it. I just flip the switch off and I can clean the keyboard and I'm not pressing a bunch of buttons on my screen. Then I flip the switch back on and I carry on with using it. Now I'm gonna cover the G815 and the main features that make it different from the G915. Number one, right off the bat, you never have to recharge it. This thing is plugged in permanently to your computer. Next, it's $50 less. So if budget is a concern, go for the G815. Another feature, you have a number lock LED indicator. If that's a big deal to you, then again, get the G815. And lastly, if you need a USB port on the back of your keyboard, then go for the G815. I personally, hands down, love these keyboards. They are the best keyboard I have ever used, period. As with everything, this is very opinion-based. I've personally used a lot of different keyboards over the years, a lot of mechanical even. These are the best keyboards and the best mechanical keyboards that I have ever personally used. Now, in case you're wondering which one is my favorite, I am going to keep the G915 and sell the G815. For me, I want the minimalist look. I want to get rid of the extra cable. I don't mind having to charge it every few days and it's nice to be able to clean my desk off whenever I want to and have an open surface. So for me, I'm gonna stick with the G915. That is my keyboard of choice. So that's it for this review, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. It does help my channel to grow because the more of these that come in, the more my video will get recommended for others. I'll see you guys in the next video.